Okay, so school sucks. Everyone knows it. One of the biggest complaints is that students memorize a bunch of words and a lot of the time they don't have a, any deep comprehension behind those words. How many students you see coming out of high school, college even, they can say, oh, oh, you know E equals MC squared? Oh yeah, I heard that. I learned that E equals MC squared. Well, what does it mean? No idea what it means. Oh, what, what's the Pythagorean theorem? Oh yeah, that's uh, that's a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? Well, no, the, the Pythagorean theorem is, is a statement about triangles, and, and that statement a squared plus b squared equals c squared doesn't say anything about triangles. So all these students learning to memorize things, they don't get the deeper learning. And one of the great challenges in teaching is that any word or symbol can mean many different things depending on the context. So when a teacher defines a new term, the words used in the definition might be interpreted in many different ways, potentially misleading the student in several different directions. This problem is further exacerbated in mathematics, besides geometry, because it fundamentally deals with intangible abstractions. And so anytime a teacher uses a, a tangible example to demonstrate a mathematical concept, the student might get caught up in the particulars of the example and then fail to learn the concept. So I've heard there was recently a television series called Empire, and perhaps more notable than the series itself was uh, two of its stars, Jesse Smollett and Terrence Howard. Smollett made himself famous by creating an obvious hoax which drew massive media attention from big-name politicians, news reporters, and other morons who were somehow dumb enough to actually fall for it. He's now facing prison time for his crime. Howard, on the other hand, is interesting for completely different reasons. Specifically, he argues that one times one equals two. And he coined the term teriology to describe this unconventional logic underlying his bizarre claim. Howard's commitment to this position seems unshakable. The big question is why, though? Is he like Smollett, simply hoping to boost his career somehow? Well, I can't rule this out completely. I'm just going to explore the other possibility. Maybe he genuinely believes that one times one is two. So the first thing we must do to reorient into this bizarro world is to forget the two. Forget about the two. Instead, ask why would one times one be anything other than one? And as it turns out, there's actually a very good reason for this. Not a mathematical reason, but a mental, conceptual reason for thinking this way. In order to convey the concept of multiplication, so many examples are used. You can buy three six-packs and get 18 beers. You can buy two cartons of eggs, supposing you can afford eggs, of course, and get 24 eggs. But in any example we use, there's a unit involved. A beer is a unit, an egg is a unit. And remember, one times one equals one has no units, except for the number one uh, itself, which is the abstract, purely mathematical unit. Another important way to, per to perceive multiplication is in terms of area and by extension volume. So here I have a very poorly drawn grid of squares. Just pretend that they're, they're squares. So we can use multiplication to count the number of empty squares here without counting them individually. And there are two different but equivalent ways to handle the units here. The first way is to look at a square and, and, and say, okay, the, the, the units here are squares. Each square is a unit. Just like, uh, just like a six pack of beer has units of beer and the, the grid has units of square, right? Well, the other way to look at it, the more interesting way to look at it is, is that the unit square can be broken down into a composite unit by multiplying the base by itself. Or as we say in mathematics, the square of the base. So we can distinguish an inch, a unit of distance from the square inch. A unit of area and this is how we get the equation one inch times one inch equals one square inch so we're combining two instances of the same unit to create a new unit 
That's not the case when you're buying groceries. And the point, coming back to teriology, is that we are, in a sense, multiplying one times one and getting something more, something greater, because we've combined units. There is a saying, you've probably heard, that the map is not the territory. Well, in math, there is no territory. All we have is a map. You look in the world, there are all kinds of units in metrics, but you will never find the number one. It's always one of these, one of those, one of something. This means that there is no real world example of one times one equals one, where the one on the right side is the same as both of the ones on the left side. The map can only be seen in the mind. So maybe teriology does have a point, because when we have one of something, that one is in a sense more than the number one by itself. I suspect this is the root of Howard's misconception. You still can't get two, though, unless you like redefine multiplication and mean something totally different, but he hasn't done that. So the conclusion is that teriology is a symptom of the math education crisis. A moderately successful actor who went to college never properly learned the difference between pure abstraction and units of measurement. He also failed to learn, as the vast majority of students these days do, how to structure a mathematical proof, which you can see for yourself by reading his proof that one times one is two. Fortunately, we are solving the math education crisis. We know how to do it. If you would like to learn more and maybe even be a part of the solution, go to algebravictory.org. And please don't hate on Terrence Howard for the failure of his teachers, but do hate on Jesse Small. He's a criminal and probably deserves what's coming to him.